In this video, I'm going to go through uh, the method for solving the diffusion equation with Neumann boundary conditions. Now, the method is going to be very similar to what we did for Dirichlet, but there's going to be a slightly different choice of uh, eigenvectors to use. So recall that we were interested in using the solutions of uxx equal lambda u um, as our eigenvectors. And we found that for lambda equals 0, we had uh, u of x equal to bx, whoops, bx plus a naught. And for lambda positive, we found exponential functions that I just sort of claimed without any justification that we're not really interested in. And the main reason is that they don't satisfy the boundary conditions that we're, we have imposed here. Um, and then what we did find useful was the eigenvalues associated uh, with, or the negative, the eigenvectors associated with negative eigenvalues. And there we found that u of x equal sine um, min, uh, square root of minus lambda over d times x, and v of x equal cosine of same. So these are the functions that we're interested in using to solve our, OD, our PDE. Okay, so with the Dirichlet conditions, we found that the cosine functions were not useful because they didn't satisfy the boundary conditions. You'll notice now, u, if I take a u sub x, or in this case, it's just a function of x, so it could just be a prime, but anyway, u sub x, this is going to be equal to the square root of minus lambda over d with a minus sign in front times cosine of minus lambda over dx. And when we try and satisfy the boundary condition, we're going to take a u sub x evaluated at 0 and at l. And when I evaluate this at, at 0, I get minus square root. Oh, no, there's no minus sign for sine. So I can keep that in there. Um, so in this one as well. So I have minus square root of minus square root of minus lambda over d times one, and that has to be equal to zero for a Neumann boundary condition. But that would force lambda to be equal to zero, and we're dealing with the lambda negative case. So clearly, we can remove the sine functions from consideration when we're dealing with Neumann conditions. However, the derivative of v of x, so v sub x of x is equal to, now I get the minus sign, so minus square root of minus lambda over d times the sine of square root of minus lambda over d times x. And now I want v sub x of 0 to be equal to 0, and that but that's already equal to 0 because the sine evaluated at 0 gives me 0. So that gets I get that for free as long as I choose the cosines. And then v sub x at l has to also be equal to 0. That's not as obvious because that's not true for all of these lambda values. But as in the Dirichlet case, when I plug in l here, I have, want that to be 0. All of a sudden, we're now limited in our choice of lambda values. Oh, sorry, the derivative is cosine, not cosine. The derivative is sine. So the sine function is only going to be 0 for certain lambdas. So now we've again restricted our values of lambda, and they turn out to be exactly the same ones. Here we end up with lambda equal minus n squared pi squared uh, over l squared times d. And again, these are going to be the eigenvalues that, the only eigenvalues that satisfy this boundary condition. So now we have a list of functions and eigenvalues, and I'll put a subscript n here again. And so the solution that we're interested in uh, in finding is going to be built from a whole collection of these cosine functions and maybe these ones here. So let's see if that straight line can satisfy the boundary conditions. Well, you'll notice that uh, a general bx plus a naught it's not going to have, it's going to have slope of b at the endpoints, and we want a slope of 0 at the endpoints. So clearly b has to be 0. But unlike the Dirichlet conditions, we still have some flexibility left here for 
a naught because any value of a naught will still give me zero slopes at the ends. So I'm going to get rid of this piece here, but I'm going to keep that one. So now my overall function u of x and t that solves this Neumann um, boundary condition problem, I can write it down as a naught times, now I could put an e to the zero t, but that's just one, so I won't bother. And then I add to that a sum from n equal one to infinity of a n cosine, well, let's put in the exponential first, e to the minus n squared pi squared over l squared d times t, and then cosine of n pi x over l. And so that's the general form of our solution. How do we figure out the a and the a n values, the a naught and the a n values? Well, what we have to do is plug in our initial condition. So we take a t equals zero and we get a naught plus the sum from n equal one to infinity of a n cosine n pi x over l. And so now what we have to do is set this equal to f of x. So basically we have to find a Fourier series for f of x in terms of cosines. In a separate video, I'll go over how to calculate the coefficients for a cosine series like this, as well as um, cover uh, a couple other boundary conditions and how to handle those cases as well.